So now we're going to talk a little bit more about memories and we're going to talk about a different type of memory that is DRAM or dynamic random access memory and how we build DRAM and SRAM arrays. So dynamic random access memory uses a capacitor to store charge. Remember in SRAM we had those two transistors. Here we just have one capacitor and this little teeny capacitor has a little switch on it and so when you turn on the switch whatever charge is on here goes out on the wire and that's how you know if you have a zero or one. So there are problems with this. You've got this little capacitor and as we know capacitors aren't perfect so the charge sort of leaks off this over time. So you have to go through and you have to periodically read out all the values and write in new values to keep the charge there. Also when you read the value out of here you read it out by letting the electrons on this capacitor go out of the capacitor. That means you destroy the value when you read it. So anytime you read data from a DRAM cell, you have to go and write it back again to put new electrons back in that cell. So why would anybody do this? Well, this needs one transistor and one capacitor instead of the six transistors that we needed to build the inverters. So this can be much, much smaller. So if you want a lot of memory, this is enormously cheaper. Here's a picture of what we got here. So this is how you build them. They're built as these deep, deep trenches. And you can see inside here, between here and here, is the capacitor. So these walls there. Here's another look of this. Here's the schematic view. You've got a really deep capacitor. You've got a little transistor to access it. And then you've got this huge wire that sends the value out. So take a look at this picture here. Here's our teeny little capacitor. And our teeny little capacitor needs to charge up this huge wire up here. So whatever electrons we charge in here have to travel out to this wire and charge up that wire so that we can read out the value. And so now let's talk about why memories are slow and fast. And this has to do exactly with charging up the wire that I mentioned just a minute ago. So it's all about how fast you can get the output. We saw earlier that when we build memory arrays, we put lots and lots of these cells together. We hook up the cells into one long wire and that gives us our output. So if we have an SRAM array, we've got these two transistors back to back connected up to this row here, to this wire here. When we want to output the value to the wire, this transistor outputs the value. This transistor gets electricity from the circuit and so it can keep pushing out more and more electrons onto the wire. Let's take a look at a DRAM. So in a DRAM we have this capacitor here. We have this capacitor and when the switch is turned on, whatever electrons are on here go out on the wire, but there's nowhere to get new electrons from because all we have for this memory are just the electrons that are there. So in the SRAM, this powered inverter can push lots of electrons onto the wire, and in DRAM, we're stuck with however many electrons we have on this capacitor. That's all we've got to put out on the wire. So this is very slow. If you look at the circuit here, this is a teeny little capacitor charging a big wire. And when you have a big wire, the wire itself has a lot of capacitance and resistance, so it takes a long time to charge it up. And that's why these are slow and fast. SRAM can push out lots of electrons through this powered inverter, whereas DRAM just has the electrons that are left in this capacitor to put out onto the wire. So this also explains why DRAMs are cheap and small and SRAMs are large. Making this circuit is enormously larger than just making this capacitor. So if I want a lot of SRAM, it's going to take up a lot of space in my chip and it's going to be an expensive chip. So let's summarize what we've talked about memories. So for memory arrays, the key thing to remember is you have these small memory cells with long output wires. And each cell, when you read it out, has to change the value on that long wire. So we had two types of memory, SRAM, static random access memory, and it keeps the value with this active feedback loop, just like we saw in the latches. DRAM, or dynamic random memory, access memory, keeps the value as a charge on a capacitor. So it has no way to replace the charge, you have to write into it again. So SRAM is big, and uses six transistors, plus you need wires for the power. So this isn't good, it means it's gonna cost a lot, but it's really fast. Because you have these powered inverters, you can drive the output wire much faster. DRAM is the opposite. It's really small, just one capacitor and one transistor. So that means you can get lots of it very cheaply, but it's slow, because you only have the charge in the capacitor to drive that really long wire. So that's the difference between SRAM and DRAM, and it's really important that you understand why SRAM is big and fast, and why DRAM is small and slow. So if it's big to make the circuit, that means it's going to be really expensive. So you can't get a lot of SRAM. And DRAM cells are small, which means you can get lots and lots of them, but they're slow. 
The other memory we talked about are latches. We talked about how you can use SRAM cells to build them and about how transparent latches let the input pass through on the high clock and how that can lead to feedback. But then we solved that with the master slave or D flip-flop that only updates the value when the clock signal comes in. We did that by putting together two of the transparent latches.